You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Derek's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. After the third time jump starting my car, I finally realized my battery was dying. So I stopped by O'Reilly to have it checked. They tested it right there in the parking lot. It was bad, real bad. But they helped me find the right battery for my car and even installed it for free. Now my car starts like new. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised.
Saturday night, everyone. This is Juxtaposition, your every two week for you know, the weird, the unusual, the unexplainable. I am Rick Robinson. He is already Packard. And it's also our very special annual deep dive into the phenomenon known as the Mandela Effect. So I expect other outlets to be putting out similar shows within the next three weeks, as usual. <laughs> hey, Woody, how are you? <laughs> Okay, so here, here's a Mandela effect about Mandela effects, really quick. Um, in the researching of the show for the last couple of years, mm-hmm. I never came across this until this year. There was a Mandela effect movie that came out in 2019. Uh, I vaguely remember that. I don't remember it, and now it is polluting my search. Just like every other mo- time there's a movie on the topic that we're going to cover, <laughs> the movie is starting to uh, pollute my ser- my searches. Well, yeah. So, well, since you brought out a new one, this is one that I discovered recently um, that honestly really, really messed with my head. So the original Quantum Leap, like Scott Bakula Quantum Mm -hmm. Leap. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The last season, apparently they redid the entire intro. And I never remember hearing that before. I, I, you know, the usual in the fifth season, they like they like tried to jazz it up a little bit. They changed some of the arrangement and. First of all, it was trash, so much like everything else, fifth season, it really doesn't exist. Um, although okay. they, they did fix a lot of things on the very last episode, other than letting Sam get home, which really pissed me off. Um, spoilers, but hell, the show's 40 years old. If you ain't watched it by now, f- f- anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, it, it, it like I started, I, I, was, I was freaking out. Because... I, I I, I I watched that show all the way through. It, it it was it was first run when I was in high school, and I think the last year was right after I grad. It was either my senior year or the year after I graduated high school. I don't remember which because I don't have it in front of me. But I never remembered hearing the theme ever get updated or changed. I always remembered the. Dun, 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 dun. And here's yeah, something right. here's something else that I didn't remember. So Mandela effect or misremembering. You decide. In the first season, it was Beckett doing the voiceovers for the intro, and then the usual Ziggy voice lady started doing the the voiceovers in like season two, season three. So there's a couple of different things when I rewatched that within I think it was probably about the last six months. I was sitting there going, "Am I like experiencing Mandela effect like right See, now?" Like, I don't remember real Ziggy life? doing it. I don't remember even in the first season. I don't remember Beckett doing it. I, I was always Ziggy. That, voice. That's what I thought. And I'm like, wait a minute! Wait, wait, I don't remember him doing these. What is what is going on? And, and then so so eventually the world went right, and Ziggy's voice was doing it again. Um, and then the last season happened, and I'm like, what did they do to the theme music? And why do I never remember the fifth season theme sucking so bad? Because I'm sure I would remember that because w- when they change things like that. If it sucks, it normally really pisses me off. And that's exactly what happened this time. I was like, um, I don't remember this. What the? What? I'm, I'm having a Mandela effect live in real time, and I don't know how to go. <laughs> I, even tweet, I even tweeted about it. I mean, it was forever ago, but I was like, I, I just experienced a Mandela effect live in real time. Does anyone else remember them changing up the original Quantum Leap theme in Season 5? Because I'm kind of freaking out. I'm yeah, that's of, that's, that's- yeah, um, I actually had planned. I didn't. Have, um, I, I didn't have time. I was, so I was going to get a. We're jumping board. into the Mandela effect thing. Yeah. Wait, did I lose you? No, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh. Did I lose you? He can't hear me. Why can you not hear me? <laughs> Hang on. Let me type. I don't know what happened. Everybody else, I think, can still hear it. Okay, I can't hear you. Hang on a sec. You broke something. That's weird because they can still hear you. <laughs> You're still coming through on my end. That's really weird. What did you do? If we go dark, it's because the CIA found us. I don't know what's going on right now. Okay, I guess you. Can you hear me now? Okay, now I can. Yeah. That, so, okay, that, so that was weird. one of the things that, yeah, well, well, no, it's not. I know exactly what happened is that 
and Skype hates this. Is that I? And this is the it, since I redid my computer. This is the first time we've been on late enough. We've been on since then for it to actually affect it. I got to change the time for it. I have my VPN disconnect and reconnect every night around this time, so that way it gets a new random IP. <laughs> and um, Skype hates that. Your, so. your, your anti-CIA tracking is going well, my friend. But yeah, yeah it, it was weird because you couldn't hear me, but I could I could still hear you, and you were even still being picked up through the system, so they could hear you. We just couldn't hear each other. It was really weird. Yeah, I, was was, like, I, I couldn't hear you back. I don't. I don't. So uh, that's weird. Okay. So anyway, sounds it sounds better now too. So weird. Um, you know, before we dive into the show, one more thing is, I I have been doing this long enough that. For those of you who have been listening for years, I initially started doing FUBAR with a Logitech gaming headset. Then I eventually upgraded my system with microphone and you know, getting good, good cans and everything like that. I have now been doing this long enough where my cans, the fake leather, is starting to flake. So I had to get one of those covers for the headband. And if anybody needs one, hit me up after because I found this brand. It, it at least fit mine for the Ars Technica. They're really good and they're actually more comfortable than the headband initial headband was so anyway <laughs> i just little update of you know not work related for once in my life this week holy shit <laughs> yeah dude your 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 work schedule your work schedule is harsh in my mellow bro two thousand miles in five days i have it for a truck driver that's not a lot but for a local truck driver that's a lot i haven't done a rick and Ordy with you in almost three weeks i know it's weird it my so <laughs> Mandela effect. It's that time of year again. <laughs> Where, um, yeah, no, it's a, it's our annual tradition to do a Mandela effect show, and it's every year it gets more and more bizarre. And um, yeah, it's like we were just talking about, you know, our own little Mandela effects. Um, it's okay. So, what is a Mandela effect? I feel like we need to, you know. I need to recap on this because, I mean, we all know, we all joke about it now, and it's kind of like become part of the uh, collective consciousness. But for those of you who have been living on Mars, up in your ear for the last several years. That's not where their um, ears were. Oh, wait, my bad. Right. <laughs> so the Mandela effect is where a large group of people, to use the psychological term, misremember or share a false memory of a cultural event, a cultural touchstone that um, doesn't comport with what actual reality is. Now, that's being very politic and very, I don't know, non-conspiratorial definition of it. The fact of the matter is, is that so many people misremember it that doesn't really apply. That's like beyond mass hallucination numbers. And a good example of this is, what it's named after is um, the Mandela effect is named after Nelson Mandela. And what had happened is when he finally died and there was the big state funeral and finally, like people were waiting for when he died <laughs> and there was a big state funeral and Obama went and it was, it was this big national, you know, this big, you know, state funeral, like you would expect for a world leader like that. A whole, whole lot of people remember him dying in prison in the nineties. So they were like, I thought he had already died. And there were even like South African school books that had references to Mandela that people could travel out saying, look, I mean, it's in the school book that I had when I was in school in the night. He died in the 90s. And so it became like this mass collective moment and also funded, you know, funded um, spread by the Internet that, um, holy shit, I remember that, too. And that's really one of the things that's really when it started and there's something else that coincided with that time but we won't talk about that yet um and uh so that's that's how it got its name it was the the, the it's the mandela effect or mandela phenomenon where people remember nelson mandela dying before he actually died and so and then going through a lot of other things, there's people, there's things that people remember differently than what history shows. Yeah, and there are a lot of them. Um, speaking of which, because this one really floored me, because I don't remember us talking about this one before, but sing the Lamb Chop song for me, Orton. <laughs> oh, shit, I, 
Um, God damn, I can't even remember it. This is the song that never ends. It goes right. on. Yeah, that's not the song. Apparently, it's the, that's song, not it's the, song, the song that doesn't end, which is bullshit because I, I had to listen to that song every day with my youngest children because they absolutely loved Lamb Chop. And I remember singing that song with them, and I don't ever remember it saying the song that doesn't end. It's the it, it was always the song that never it's ends. The song that never ends. Yeah. No, I remember that too. Uh, so that's, now that you did it, I'm just like, no, wait a second. It's the song that never ends. Yeah. <laughs> I. Well, and, I mean. Go ahead. I mean, well, that's just one of the ones that that we hadn't touched on before. So I wanted to kind of start with something yeah. new. But well, I, I, okay, so you know what? Actually, I don't ever remember even seeing that before we started researching for this show. Nope. It's never come up. So before. that may actually be a new one. Yeah, that that's the. I mean, this yeah. we st- we started doing this show. What was it? Twenty nineteen. It was we, the third. Yeah, it was the third show. Which also the movie came out in twenty nineteen after we did the show. Yeah. Which once again, we plays the trail for. Well, a lot this of is, that's just, well, that's just like we talked. We talked about this in twenty nineteen. We did a Mandela Effect show, and then all of a sudden, all these other weird paranormal podcasts and YouTube shows were doing paranormal our, our Mandela Effect shows. Yeah. And I'm like, did we do everybody's show prep for the year? What the hell? Right. And some of them, some of them, that's their whole channel shtick now. They just do Mandela effects, and you see where they came along was in twenty nineteen or twenty twenty as the channel was founded. So, I mean. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was us. Uh, but so some of the more famous ones, and that one's going to bug me too. Um, that's why I had to share it because that's another one that's like right. messing with my head. <laughs> so, some of the more famous ones, the ones that we've covered in the past, is, for instance, in Empire Strikes Back, in, in you know the, the the climactic scene where Luke and Vader are facing off, and you know Vader says, "You know, Obi Wan never told you what happened to your father." Luke says, "You killed." Him. He said, "No." He says. Luke, I am your father. That is, it's on T-shirts, it's on coffee cups, it's on everything. It is the most remembered line, the most quoted line of almost any of the Star Trek, you know, Star, I'm Star Trek, Star Wars movies. I see. I'm even trying to repress Star Wars in my memory now. Um, Fucking Disney, but it's not. Yeah, no. That's... Vader says, "No, I am your father," and... and even James Earl Jones got this wrong. Well, actually, he said it right since it has been changed, he said it in a, when he was doing an interview, doing a press junket for Empire Strikes Back, and James Earl Jones was the voice of Vader, for those for you really young kids. Um, and uh, so when he was, you know, he said the line, Luke, I am your father. And then he said, no, he's lying, meaning, you know, Vader's lying. And no, that's not what he, and he read the line, and he says that it's, Luke, I'm your father. But if you want to watch Empire Strikes Back now, it's no, I am your father. Which is a lie. <laughs> Which is, yeah. Not not that he's his father that that's been settled, but right. the actual line was Luke, I am your father. I mean, come right. on, <laughs> it doesn't even sound right the other way. Come on, no, it, <laughs> right? <laughs> it, 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 yeah. So, and, and another one, and we covered this on you know the first show is Sally Fields, which again is it Sally Field or Sally Fields in this time one because. I've heard it both ways. I've always been known as Sally Fields, but in this timeline, it's Sally Field. Anyway, um, when she finally got her Oscar, and she's up there, she's holding the Oscar, and she says, you know, you like me. You really like me. Everybody knows that. It's been quoted. It was even quoted in The Mask. Again, T-shirts. That's not what she said. Again, T-shirts and everything else. Memes. Not what she said. Well, if you look at the tape now, she says, you like me. Right now, you like me. That, that is doesn't not, even make sense. Yeah, no, that's, that is not what she said. <laughs> it's not what she said. And that's, so, and again, you know, it's how can so many people everywhere get it wrong? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll possibly getting into, be getting into that in the second half of the show. But I, but I got another semi new one for you that I don't remember if we've covered it or not. I have a question on the on the on the raisin brand logo for the sun sunglasses or no sunglasses sunglasses not according to this timeline <laughs> yeah always had sunglasses and that was the thing the two scoops of raisins because raisins are sun dried you have the sun you have the sunglasses it's the whole motif the sun rising with the sunglasses and the two scoops of raisin into the box of raisin brand how many the people? How many people in chat are freaking out? I'm just wondering how many people in chat are freaking out right now. 
<laughs> I, have, I just realized I don't have chat open. I need to fix that. Oh yeah, you, no, it's, they're they're on they're on the side. They're done. will be hitting him for a minute. In a minute. Now we have to give the distinction between Mandela effect and false memory. So that way, you know, people, you you know, those listening don't just go, well, they're just covering false memories. No, here are a couple false memories, and this is one I absolutely thought was a Mandela effect, but the more that I research it, I realized, no, that's a false memory. And we covered this the first time we did it too, but just to give an example. Um, we are the champions queen song. Everybody knows it as ending with, we are the champions pregnant pause of the world. This was brought to the forefront on a, um, what was it? Uh, karaoke cab, karaoke cab where they had George Clooney, Julia Roberts. Um, I'm trying to think who else was in the car. And, you know, it, it was a bit and, you know, they're right. They're doing the uh, they're singing. We are the champions in it. It gets to the point of the song at the end where Freddie Mercury is supposed to belt out of the world and they're all waiting for it. And they all started with of the and it doesn't happen. The song just ends and they're freaking out about it. And this was a really big, you know, this was um, in fact, those who haven't researched it, it's still pretty big on the Mandela effect um, sites. What had happened was when that song reached peak popularity it was the version from a live recording in toronto it was a live album that queen released and um that was like it was it was either around the time freddie died or not long after that the album was released and so it was like huge popularity uh, it was kind of like with talking heads stop making sense to her it was that those songs are more recognized live than they are in the album versions because every radio station plays the live version because it's the best version. And in the live version, he finishes it with Of the World. And it comes breaks down to whether the song has Of the World or not at the end depends on Freddie Mercury's mood at the time when he sang it. So there's a false memory for you. There's the difference. Is that is that you know, you remember you know, it one way and it's different. That's because it was sang both ways. So um, there, there, is an, there is an explanation for it. A lot of these there isn't. Well, it's like Jeff just pointed out. He said technically the Raisin Brand son had sunglasses and not because at one point he, in the commercials he had them on and he took them off. But I even remember the sunglasses on the box. And according to these folks, that's I remember it on the, <clears throat> Yeah. I remember it on the box as well. So here's what, you know, we've talked about corporate logos in the past. You know, it's like, it was the Target, did it have a solid tar the Target logo for Target stores? Did it have a solid circle in the middle or did it have another white circle in the middle? And that one, I, you know, I don't have an opinion one way or the other. But Oscar Mayer was also always Oscar, M-E-Y-E-R, not A-R, to me. Um, it, there's, you know, a lot of, you know, it's um, the Ford. Did the F and the Ford have a swoosh in it? You know, kind of like a cursive T. Uh, lots of, lots of people ways people remember logos or not the, the biggest one now and this is one is actually interesting because it has been this one okay so when something is residual when people remember things and there's still evidence out there of it being that way no matter how much you be is is vehemently denied um those are called artifacts residual artifacts where the old what the old world hasn't completely erased that yet and one of these is it, actually come up is the fruit of the loom logo where everybody remembers it having a cornucopia. And Fruit of the Loom brand is adamant. They never had a cornucopia. All right, bear with us for a second, guys. Apparently we're having a technical issue, so I'm going to load something you guys can hear for a couple of minutes while we restart voice meter. Um, I'm going to see if that clears it up because I, I, I just did all this and I don't know why it's being cranky again. But bear with me for just a second. Because, yeah, the choppiness is back. And I don't know why. I have a couple of full songs loaded just for this occasion, though. So. Yeah. You know what I noticed the other night is um, when you were solo, you came through perfectly clear. But when you were doing um he said, she said last night, you were get, it was clear most of the time, but you were still getting choppy. So I think it may have something to do with your Skype. Could be. Let's uh, try Discord this week. All right, so we are going to take a little musical interlude for you guys. Um, this will give me a chance to hopefully restart the whole voice meter thing. But I just did that, so I don't know why it's being so cranky. But anyway, so I'm going to make sure you guys can hear it, but we don't because 
Yeah, we don't need you. Anyway, music break. We'll be right back. In restless dreams, I walked alone. Narrow streets of cobblestone. Neath the halo of a stream lamp, I turned my color to the cold and damp. When my eyes were stained by the flash of So we restarted the soundboard engine, so hopefully that clears it up. You guys let me know. We'll do everything yeah. we can. If, anyway. Um, Jeff, I've been trying to set up a time with you to go over StreamYard, but I never know when you're available, so me. <laughs> yeah, there's this thing called Discord where you can message each other. Yeah, anyway. I know. So, anyway. all right. So I can't believe we've already had this far in the show. Okay, so one of the ones we've covered in the past, this one, it threw me pretty bad, was in um, Snow White. And this is one we've talked about, like I said, we talked about before. Um, mirror, mirror on the wall. Everybody knows it. T-shirts, mugs, tattoos. Nope. Magic mirror on the wall. That one threw again, me pretty I call hard. Bullshit. What's that? I said, again, I call bullshit. <laughs> I don't well, well here's and here's and here's a new one, um, Alice in Wonderland. See, also from the Disney animation, not from you know the but strictly from the one that we all saw a thousand times in growing up. Disney's Alice in Wonderland, um, where the Cheshire Cat says, "We're all mad here." Doesn't say that. Says most everyone's mad here. Again, I know someone who has that tattoo. With we're all mad here in the Cheshire Cat. Yeah, well, you know, maybe they're from the actual. Maybe they're actually from the th this timeline, though. No, because oh wait, they have a they have a backwards. It's, Never it's, mind. They, they, yeah, they, they have, have the, the one right, that we mind. all know. We're all mad here. That's how I've always known. I even think that that's referenced in the Alice in American McGee's Alice video game. That quote specifically. But now it is, when you watch it, most everyone's mad here. Oh, dude, the chat is putting out Mandela effects that we don't even yeah. have in our notes. No, <laughs> we, covered, we we did. I think we did the Britney one uh, a couple years ago. Probably. Yeah, she was wearing a microphone headset. I distinctly remember that. I I, I think we even referenced the uh, the action figure, the doll. Yeah. That was had the microphone, yeah, too. It was had, that, that iconic. Had the microphone headset. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even a Britney Spears fan, and I remember that. Come on now. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, so here's one. Um, when do you remember Thanksgiving being? Uh, it's always on the last Thursday of November, isn't it? I remember it being the third. I remember it being the week earlier, around the 19th or 20th. You're usually around the third the third Thursday of the month, not the fourth. I always thought it would maybe. I don't know. See, that's just it. So I'm 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 older than you, so maybe you're in the new world on this one because I remember it being the third Thursday. I'm just wondering how many timeline shifts there have been because there's so many things that, and it's weird because you're right. It's like the older you get, the more shifts you've gone through because yeah. Because even, and I don't remember who it was to put it out in the chat a second ago, uh, Danielle had typed Sally Fields, and someone else a few minutes later typed Sally Field. I remember that from The Flying Nun. I'm old as fuck, y'all. So it's it's, right. it's it's like the longer you've been around, the more you've shifted. Mm -hmm. Or the more has shifted for you. Well, that too. Um, yeah. See, that that's just, I mean, it's in chat right now, Danielle and Jeff. Uh, both remember it being the third Thursday, but you remember it the fourth Thursday. <laughs> See? Again, how can so many people get it wrong? And collectively, too, it's not like, you know, we, you know, like some of us went to the same school where we did it on the third Thursday, or that, you know, the school system, 
you know, like what they did with presidents when you used to have, you know, Washington's birthday, Lincoln's birthday, and Valentine's in between. Now they just give you the whole week and call it President's Week, but we used to have individually have it. It's not, I mean, this is people, for, I mean, even within the same group, uh, like we all are, have different memories. Well, I mean, and that's just like, I remember when I, and this was several years ago, I remember when I first got serious about news and I'm like, I'm like calling out like CNN and Fox News for, for typing their chirons long, wrong because they were still doing like the double L stuff. at Like for Traveler and stuff, there was two L's instead of one. Buses was two S's instead of one. When you added the when you added the yes at the end, and I remember being t- taught that in fourth grade grammar, that you know when when you made when you when you added the modifiers at the end, you added an extra consonant. Apparently now that's the British way of doing things, and I'm like I wasn't in Britain. When did, did when did that happen? <laughs> I remember yeah. being. T- I mean I still do it all the time out of habit, and then I have to go back I, every time I'm writing for Twitchy. If I try to write one of those words that I've always spelled. Apparently, the British way, um, I have to go back in and fix it because Sam's like, hey, that's not how we spell that here in America, sir. And I'm like, fuck, I did it again. (laughs) No, that sounds about right. I'm like, but that's how I was taught to do it in second, third, and fourth grade grammar. I don't don't know when the change happened, but apparently now it's British to spell it T-R-A-V-E-L-L-E-R, and it's American to spell it T-R-A-V-E-L-E-R. And that really oh, blows I my spell, mind. I spell it British. You know, it's weird as I'll spell it British and then spell check will get me. So, yeah. I'm like, no, you're wrong. So, so I guess that must have been some sort of a shift that, uh, that happened around us at around the same time because that, that's one that you and I both were like, no, that's how I was taught to spell that shit. And I didn't come right. from Britain. No, you double the consonant if you're doing a plural with followed by a vowel. I, I know. Always, <laughs> yeah. except not now. I don't understand. Right. Okay, so this one, do, do, these two, I, I, I know we've talked about in the past, but they still, map, in their map things, it just absolutely blow me away. Where do you remember, and in, relative to South America, we'll say, you know, where does South America line up? Would, say you're going down Argentina, where would, does that line up on the map? Which time zone? Uh... I don't honestly remember if I'm being truthful, but I would. See, I remember for, for okay. Argentina. I wouldn't that line up somewhere around Central Time Zone. I would have thought. See, I thought so. I thought so as well. I actually remember it being kind of like, um, like Chile, and being you know okay, kind of like almost. I don't want to say parallel, like straight you know along the same parallel line as Nevada, Utah, but I remember it being further west, Chile. Is actually in Eastern Time Zone. Argentina is in this, is in Eastern Time Zone. Brazil way out in the fucking Atlantic now. I remember the South. I remember South America being about a thousand miles further west than it is now. <sighs> I just, and I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna drop this in the chat because this just does not look natural to me. This is just completely unnatural. And another one. New Zealand is southeast or northeast of Australia? Uh, southeast, I think. I remember it as northeast. I remember Australia, New Zealand, and uh, the Philippines, Indonesia. Now it's southeast. So here's one that I don't remember ever seeing except for on an episode of Sliders. Um, Apparently people are reporting that at some time there was a universe where the um, stoplights were reversed, where green was on the top, yellow was in the middle, and red was on the bottom. The only time I ever remember seeing that was during the first episode, sliders. First episode of Sliders, whenever he's yeah. driving after he's uh, jumped universes, and it's so similar he doesn't really notice it at first, and he's driving, and all of a sudden he's trying to stop on a red, and everybody's like honking at him and screaming and yelling. Right, yeah, 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 I remember that, yeah. Now, that's the only time I ever I ever remember seeing that, so, but anyway. But yeah, I, so, see, I okay. see what you're talking about. South America is not actually directly underneath yeah. North America. Um, that's not... That's, that just that, seems... That's, even that's okay, not, not being directly, that just seems insanely... East. That's just way too far over. What? The, I don't. I, yeah. I don't. That that. 
that no <laughs> no yeah yeah that just that that is incomprehensible to me yeah no that that so uh, biologically i've had i've gotten this wrong forever apparently that um usually when i'm talking about where pain is around my lower back especially now with my new job um i'll see like okay so it's right around my kidneys and some people know exactly where I'm talking about. Some people look like I just grew a second head. Apparently, your kidneys are in the middle of your back. Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> Hang on. I'll drop that in the chat, too. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying, because that, that's another one that threw me was the kidneys. And then there was another one I saw, and I don't think I dropped the link for it, where they were talking about, and you remember when you were a kid and you were told to do the Pledge of, Pledge of Allegiance and you're told to put your, your hand over your heart and you're told to put it on the left side? Because that's where your heart's supposed to be. Apparently, a lot of people's hearts are now more dead center. Yeah, I don't remember them being dead center either. I you know. <laughs> I, I mean, your right hand over your heart, your palm should have been right over your heart. I mean, not like your whole hand. It's not like your you know your left ventricle is up in your shoulder. But still, it's I don't remember it again. Like in that photo, the center, you know, middle chest. I mean, that barely even middle left. And I'm sorry, this is another hill I will die on. Hannibal Lecter did, in fact, say hello, Clarice. I'm just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, dude, that's, yep. another, that's another one of those lines that was, has been quoted for forever. So if he didn't say it, where did they hear it? <laughs> <sighs> I just, I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, um, you know, while we're talking about brands again, Pillsbury Doughboy. Blue scarf. <laughs> oh, sorry. Apparently not. White scarf. What? No way. <coughs> oh, yeah. Why would they... Pillsbury Doughboy is white. Why would they put a white scarf on a white... Exactly. That, 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 I mean, no. White scarf, white hat. No. White scarf, white hat, blue eyes, Pillsbury logo. See, now, the white hat makes sense. That's a chef's hat. Yeah, I mean, the white, I, the hat white makes scarf, sense. I mean, generally, I mean, if it's going to be, it should be, you know, based on what, you know, where you are in the kitchen is the color of your scarf. But pastry chef would not be a white scarf. And I don't remember it ever, I don't remember it ever having a yeah. white scarf. I remember the blue one. I remember the blue one, yeah. Okay, um, so here's another one that just kind of threw me as I was scrolling through because I almost forgot about this one. Uncle Sam's hat, red, white, and blue? or Because, oh, yeah. yeah, apparently in this timeline it's only white and blue, which makes zero fucking sense. Everything about America is red, white, and blue. What the hell are you trying to do to us? <laughs> I yeah. No, it's... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, no, I remember red, white, and blue hat. Vertical stripes. Vertical stripes vertical stripes of red and white, yeah. blue band of stars. Yeah, it, it basically looked like the flag, the flag turned on, uh, basically facing upwards, is what it looked like. It was the it was the, the stars and the bars, which is, which is our flag. Um, so I don't understand why in this timeline it's different now, apparently, but okay. <laughs> I can can we go home now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I mean, th th does the universe we came from, where everything made sense, still exist, or are these things all collapsing no. in on themselves? <laughs> and that's why that's why I haven't just embraced chaos culture because even if our cultural touchstones don't fucking matter because they're not real, then nothing matters. I just. I. I mean, come on. Fuck. Fucking. Apollo Creed and Rocky IV wore the Uncle Sam get up and the hat was red, white, and blue. Come on, man. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I don't. That, that wanna one. Go to, that one. You want to go to break on that one? Yeah, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a minute. Um. All right. Yeah. No, that one fucked me up, too, because I remember the vertical. Yeah. I, that's like every novelty hat you get for Fourth of July has. The ver white, red, white vertical stripes with the blue band of stars. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, de definitely. De in in the words of Rain Man, definitely, definitely gonna need a minute because holy crap, my br my my brain might explode while we're on break. Anyway, trying to figure out what we're going to break with. Anyway, we'll just play this one. 
All right. See now, Jeff just provided Jeff just provided a picture that has the kidneys where I remember them. Yeah. No. Not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not. Not fucking center back. Well, you know what's funny though is, like I said, you know, when I'm describing it and I'm pointing to my lower back, there's some people will look at me like I just grew a second head. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You, you're way low. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a break. We're about halfway through the Mandela Effect episode. And I don't know about y'all, but my mind is blown already. But uh, Yeah, we haven't even started yet. Yeah, we haven't even gotten into a lot of the newer stuff yet, which is even weirder. But on that note, we're going to take a break, quick break. When we come back, second half of our annual foray into the Mandela, Mandela Effect live right here on KLR Radio. You are listening to Juxtaposition. Ordi and I will be right back. Doesn't mean our brains will change from hand grenades. You live in on the psychopath sitting next to you. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My son was in the army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
$1 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Derek's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. After the third time jump-starting my car, I finally realized my battery was dying. So I stopped by O'Reilly to have it checked. They tested it right there in the parking lot. It was bad, real bad. But they helped me find the right battery for my car and even installed it for free. Now my car starts like new. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. back we are live and i kind of needed that mellow bumper coming back in already so thanks for the suggestion <laughs> yeah no problem I, I think i have my blood pressure back under control maybe anyway so we're back well i'm we're gonna live. throw it off again yeah i know well that's your, that's your, that's your stick <laughs> it's your stick yeah, i'm gonna have to the next time we do this i'm gonna have to revisit the um the lions and the lambs one it's your stick on the radio. It's your stick on X. It's just kind of your stick. So everybody's kind of used to it. Whatever. Anyway, so we're back. We're live. This is our annual deep dive into the Mandela effect. And uh, this one, this one, this one that he's about to bring up might actually blow your mind because because he remembers it one way and I remember it another. Which is kind of, which actually what's funny is that I remember it both ways. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Um, and that's actually what's weird is that because I actually do remember it both ways. And that's um, Alexander Hamilton on the $20 bill, right? Yeah. Never president. I remember him being president. What's weird is I distinctly remember him being the fifth president. I also distinctly remember James Monroe being the fifth president. Yeah, James Monroe was fifth president. Madison was secretary of treasurer. Or right, Hamilton. Hamilton, Hamilton was Hamilton was the first Secretary of the Treasury, but still, I remember him being the fifth president. But I also remember him being uh, James Monroe being the fifth president. Is that weird? I saw that one and I was like, oh well, I mean, you know, because it's like, yeah, I mean, of course, they, not everybody on money was president because Ben Franklin's on the hundred and he wasn't president. And um, but. But what, 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 what I are, remember Hamilton. I remember Hamilton being president. Remember how we talked about the longer you've been around, the more things have shifted. Maybe the mm-hmm. maybe the people that remembered Ben Fl- Ben Franklin being president aren't here anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, what's funny is that people, you know, some people think Ben Franklin was president. I mean, it's a good troll. <laughs> you know, it's like you know, three year Letterman. <laughs> does. <laughs> um, yeah. So that one, I mean, it, it kind of bugged me when I saw that. It's like, well, I mean, of course he wasn't president. So wait a second. No, he was president. I, I, so it was like, like I said, both. I, I remember both. And I think that's even weirder than it being one or the other. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, so speaking of things being weird and not making sense, what if I told you that one of the newest theories around the Mandela effect is that it is actually a, a, a tool being used to revise history. See, now this, I mean, fucking you charge on Reddit. I love you. Um, but this actually kind of tracks. I mean, this makes sense, too, in that they are, they, the obsequious they, are gaslighting you on purpose, that they are purposely going and changing these things. Well, so, like, one of the most famous ones, and we've touched on it before, is Fruit of the Loom. 
cornucopia or no cornucopia. I remember specifically there being a cornucopia because I remember the TV commercials with the dudes dressed up as fruit, dan- basically with a cornucopia there. And I remember the yeah. logo having a cornucopia. But if you look right. at if you look at if you if you look at Fruit of the Loom's website because somebody tried to call them out for it and they're like, no, here's every logo we've ever had, no cornucopia. You go to Snopes, Snopes says no. So then, and I sent you the link to this earlier. If um, but there's somebody that actually found a T-shirt in their closet. Yeah, Danielle posted it in chat too. With a logo with the corn- cornucopia in it. Now, according to Snopes. Because I checked, somebody supposedly faked that one. I don't trust Snopes any further than I can throw them, and I think this. Yeah, is... but that doesn't that doesn't look faked. I know, right? That's that what I'm exactly saying. Exactly like I remember the logo. <laughs> it, it doesn't look faked. It doesn't look like somebody tried to Photoshop it. It doesn't look like somebody. It, I mean, look, AI's gotten really and good. That's, and that's well, and here's the thing too: is is that that's not a tagless. Yeah. So that's not that's not you know. Yeah, that, that's not an over shirt. Sure. That's not something somebody pulled out of their clo- the back of their closet or you know, it was, it was sent down to, you know, some third world country after a Super Bowl team lost with all the winning Super Bowl team jersey shirts and shit. But that was that's a newer shirt. But the wear on the logo, I mean, if it's a Photoshop, it's a really fucking good one because even like where the wear of the neck would be predominant yep. on a tagless. Yeah. That the cornucopia is worn more than the care instructions and size. But yeah, so I mean, and, and this is something that has has gotten really, really popular as far as explaining this stuff. And with as much as the people that are supposed to be, uh, you know, the people and the people running everything are gaslighting us daily anymore. I, I, I this is probably a more plausible theory than anybody wants to admit. But again, the thing that scares me about all of this is are you telling me that there are people that are trying to mess with our heads so much that they're going back through and they're changing what Mickey Mouse looks like and saying, oh, no, he's always had a tail. No, the fuck he did not. Or Curious George never had a tail. Or, yeah, Mickey Mouse never wore suspenders. And, yeah, it is, or he had suspenders on Steamboat Willie. And, you know, it's – I think of what it would take – and this is actually, you know, Jeff just brought it up in chat, too. The reason why, I mean, I, I can totally see, like, the value of the gaslighting. And if you were in a society like Soviet Russia, you could do that because you have an entire government mechanism working for you. You could not really do that now, especially with the advent of the Internet. Because taking Occam's razor, which is something that we've talked about many times on the show, and applying it, if you don't know what Occam's, Occam's razor is, that's where, you know, the... When you look at all the possibilities, the one that requires the fewest assumptions, you know, the the easiest one, the, um, which makes more sense that there is a government cabal or there is a cabal going back and rewriting all of history, which isn't that hard to do with the I mean, but it would also be hard to accomplish. Because, it would be hard to do with the Internet, but it'd be hard to accomplish because of the Internet. You, that's where the Internet's a double edged sword on this one or. You have parallel universes in the multiverse kind of bumping into each other, and sometimes shit gets shuffled up. Yeah, and I mean, and and you know that that's the other thing with all of this is the so there's there's two battling theories right now. One is that everything that we are saying used to exist actually did exist, and that over time they changed it just to try to see as an experiment how much they can mess with our brains. Um, after 2020, I'm not saying that's not possible. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's not like it requires a few more assumptions. You know, again, finishing off the Occam's Razor thing is the one with the fewest assumptions is the most likely, no matter how implausible, because it doesn't require a lot of extra steps. You know, it's the the path of least resistance is kind of, and yeah, after 2020, I could absolutely see it, but also it just requires a few more assumptions. And a little more, uh, a lot more effort <clears throat> than to just have. I mean, because basically, you know, we're still monkeys banging rocks together. We, we know <laughs> very, very next to nothing about the universe. So, yeah. And the, the funny thing is, every time we think we understand something about the universe, the universe says, ha, ha, just kidding. But here, here's another one. 
that, that, that may or may not blow your mind depending on how big of a Scooby-Doo fan you were growing up. Apparently in this timeline, Shaggy doesn't have a giant Adam's apple. Um, right, no, I remember that. I remember him. That was, the, that was like, you know, part of the caricature of him being super gaunt. Yeah. Was it, that he was so gaunt that his Adam's apple was extraordinarily prominent. Yeah, very very lanky, very tall, very skinny, and so gaunt that basically they 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 overemphasized it by showing his Adam's apple. Now now apparently in this time timeline that never happened. Um right. I just I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so going with a tweet you made today about, you know, thankfully, you know, Mr. Rogers wasn't with us to experience council culture. Yep. Um, sing a song. What, the the his theme song. Yeah, I don't the even, neighborhood. I, I don't even remember. I remember like the melody, but I don't it, remember the words. Yeah, it, it's okay. So, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yeah, it's a right. Beautiful okay, day in the very inclusive. Yeah, very close. You know, it's a beautiful day of the day. It doesn't matter what neighborhood you're in. Your neighborhood is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. No, it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. Fuck your neighborhood. My neighborhood has a beautiful day. No, it was the. It's a beautiful it's day a, in the neighborhood. In this day, in this neighborhood, doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, it does now. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean that that just, that just tracks with the whole. Are they trying to use this stuff to mess with our heads? Because. Did they at some point change the theme song be when they started trying to stop bringing us all back together again? Yeah. No, because, I mean, it's deci- it's divisive. You know, my neighborhood's great. Your neighborhood's shit. <laughs> but yeah. But, okay, Miss, so, Miss, so here, go going ahead. along with the line of them changing everything, too, funny thing, when um, redoing the research for this, I mean, obviously, you know, as much as I make fun of Wikipedia, some you know, there are I, I still pull from it as a resource just as a you know, that coalesces my thought better than I did. Well here's here's where even in the last year since we last did the show, Mandela Effect doesn't have its own Wikipedia entry anymore. It is what? now specifically under false memory. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dude, I remember when we first That's started, irony. When we first started doing this though, that was where that was where the source material started because that's where I went. I pulled that and then I started digging in everywhere else and used that kind of as an anchor point to to go find everything. I didn't yeah. actually even try to pull that up this time though cuz I had already had some notes. Um I just pulled it up because it, I in the description of what the Mandela effect is in the article that I've used in the past, it was very for Wikipedia, very non-biased. It was a very open-minded approach to Mandela Effect, and and giving you know redoing this, I wanted to have you know what that was a pretty good uh, intro for it. I remember using it in the past. I'm going to use that just so I can skim over it. And, you know, crib the notes. But now it's specific, it's right as an example of false memory. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I what, what I, I it gives a little bit of credibility. But again, this is the kind of thing. It's like okay, so. These again, these touchstones are getting moved. Artifacts are being, you know, erased. And but 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 here here's my last mind blowing twist on all of this because we're just about out of time anyway. Um, what if both things are true? And what if we have shifted timelines again to where now they are using the Mandela effect to gaslight us, and that wasn't how it was in the previous timeline. I mean, it's as <laughs> it's plausible. I mean, it's. I mean, I. I think the whole using the Mandela effect to gaslight us is just too complicated. You know, it's. Uh, I, I'm not. I. I see that. I can see how they could, but it. It just seemed. It. I. I'm not. I'm not leaning into that one. Well, so, um, well, so here's my thing, right? I kind of get that. You know, it can't be an overall encompassing everything about the Mandela effect is being used to gaslight us. But I am starting to believe that there are pockets of it that they are using intentionally to mess with our heads. Oh, no, that I can totally buy that. They are actually taking an effect. They are taking an effect and using it to 
Yeah, no, that I can buy. Not that the whole Mandela effect is a psyop, but that they're using the Mandela effect to further a psyop. Yeah, I that mean, one I can lean into. Yeah, sorry, I probably should have articulated that better, but that's actually what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying the entire Mandela effect is a psyop. What I'm saying is is that at some point along the way, somebody figured out that these things were happening, and then they started figuring out, well, if things are already shifting for some of these people anyway, we can tweak things here and there with things the way we want them to be just to see how well they go over. And and that that's kind of where I am with it, with the whole psyop. Is it, it the whole thing's not a psyop? But I think a, I think key people have figured out that hey, we can use how to the, use it. Yeah, we can use this to our advantage. So let's do that. <laughs> yeah, the MK Ultra people absolutely. We could figure out. I mean, that's and again, having the internet and especially coinciding with the dead internet theory, um, is pretty easy to erase tracks now. We gotta do the dead internet theory again too. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to expand on that one, but you know, it kind of goes with this: is that there's something Mickey and I have been talking about. Is it's the uh, the GTA theory or the GTA effect for Grand Theft Auto, and that's where and this kind of goes with okay, you have the Mandela effect, which is part of the glitch in the machine, and another thing is like um, when you steal a car in Grand Theft Auto, all of a sudden you see that car more on the road, or in real life example, you buy a car. Or you know you you get a uh, you get a new car for you, and then all of a sudden you start seeing that car fucking everywhere. It wasn't anywhere before you bought it. It's not like a new car. It's like you just got went out and got a twenty twenty four or something. You know it's um, but like when you buy a class of vehicle, then all of a sudden you start to notice it more. Yeah, no, I mean, and the same thing happens happened to me. I remember when I had my Malibu, it was like everywhere I looked, there were Malibus now. And with the Kia now, it's like every every time I turn around, there's a Kia. I'm like, I, I mm. but yeah, we we've talked about that before. Um, well, so we we were talking about when you were, you and um, Aggie were doing. He said she said a couple of weeks ago, I got it and it kind of freaked me out. I'd gotten my first no, nosebleed since I was like in high school. I mean, you know, first just like a random nosebleed, not because I got into a fist fight, but just a random, you know, for no reason, nosebleed. What was weird is that two or three other people had talked about nosebleeds within the week leading up to that. And when I mentioned it in chat, Aggie had said she had gotten her first nosebleed in her life recently. Yeah, that, that, that floored me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was like, how have, you, how have you been on the planet longer than me and you've never had a nosebleed before? What the hell? She's an island girl. So. I mean, we've got so many more that we didn't even touch on in these new ones. Uh, I mean, we're, we're going to have to do another show next year. Yep. I mean, well, we, we do this every year anyway, so that's a given. Okay, so here's what this one actually kind of poured me to. Um, really quick. Uh, Bragg's apple cider vinegar. It's always been Bragg's. There's no S on it anymore. Just Bragg. Bullshit. I'll drop in chat. Well, no, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I, I, that, yeah, I remember just Bragg's. Bragg apples. That that doesn't. That this is what I would use as part of my um, egg coloring routine, specifically Bragg's. That was our family brand. No S on it anymore. Okay. I gotta let that one go now. Oh man. Okay, my brain is fried now. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, since, yeah, since, yeah. since we haven't done this in a couple of weeks, what are you watching these days? Oh shit. Um. Well, I say I, I got a friend of mine who finally got into uh, Stargate, so I've been kind of watching along with him off and on, and he just hit the season with the the Atlanta split. Which is funny is that it's something I never did. He because he's OCD. He went online and found the actual watch order for when that happens. So it's kind of like it's funny. That you got five episodes of SG One, then you go back and do three episodes of Atlantis. So it's kind of fun doing it that way. So um, I've been tagging those both, and I went back to uh, season one of Deep Space just because I've been driving so many miles. And I was joking about it. I feel like I've spent more waking miles in Nevada than California this week. So basically, my head's been hitting the pillow as soon as I get home. Doesn't the air smell freer in Nevada, though? It really does. In the free state of Nevada. I was in northern and southern Nevada this week, so all over the place. It was great. You were in Art Bell's hometown for a while. 
I was. I was in, I was over the hump and perump for a little bit too. So I'm, I'm jealous. I've always wanted to go there. I need to do that sometime. It's I mean I know it's, it, there's not much there, but still. <laughs> there's not much there. There's brothels there. Didn't get to stop though, because I was in a company vehicle. I, I'm sorry, did, did you say brothels? Giggity, 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 let's have sex. Sorry, had to be done. Contractually required. Alright, anyway. Um Yeah. So how about you? What are you watching? Um, actually, I've been kind of finding some older shows that I never really got into first run. Um, on on Max lately, I've been well. Actually, I've been I've, so I I started my annual Alias rewatch, but I've been kind of flipping around on that one because I don't know. I I used to be able to watch that one straight through, and I was just like, you know what? I got to turn this one off for a while and watch something else. So on Max, I found a show that I never really got into the first time. I, I, I realize now that I've seen a couple episodes here and there because I was like, oh, I remember this. Uh, but The Mentalist, um, which is kind of like a cross between Leverage and yeah. Monk, um, but it's uh, CBI agents who eventually become FBI agents, blah, 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 blah. Um, but it's it's kind of like a cross between, um, what was that show, Lie to Me, Monk, and um, right. and, and uh, Leverage on – TNT. It was. It was like. A, it's like a mix of all uh, of all of those. So, and the weirdest thing about this show is, is it does kind of what I've always said I really wanted a show to do, and now that it's doing it, I'm not a big fan. Like they wrapped like the the big bad was dealt with in like the middle of like season four. So then there was like half a season where everything just went sideways, and I'm like, wait a minute, this really feels like the end should have been like half as in. in and then by the end of the fourth season, by the fifth season, the whole premise of the show changed. I mean, it's been kind of interesting because I've seen, like, the dude that plays Lewis Litt played a bad guy on one of the episodes. On the same episode, um, why can I not think of his name right now? Uh, the dude from Justified, one of the big guys on Twitter that I've been mad never follows me. Can't think of his name right now, though. Um, also, Seven Days. Anyway, god damn it, his face is right there, but I'm so tired I can't remember his name. Um, but yeah, so he played a sheriff in one of the episodes, and I always kind of like it when I find little, especially smaller parts that he's done. And I'm like, can't... Nick Searcy. I knew it was in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why can't I not? I think he follows me. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> Which is funny because I, I, I'm in a previous life, he blocked the fuck out of me. Um, Dude, you've been reincarnated so many times. Nobody, nobody knows who you are anymore except for your really loyal people. I, I, I'm, I'm the eleventh llama. Said the eleventh plague of Egypt. I'm the eleventh llama. I've been reincarnated so many times. I'm really sad. Speaking of people on from Hollywood on X and Twitter, I'm, I'm really sad that James Wood deleted the only tweet that I had a good comeback for it to recently on his timeline because he did a your mom joke, and I'm like, are you already Packard long lost father? I, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I was really hoping he was going to see that one. You know, okay. You know, while we're on the subject, you know, wrapping it up. Um, one of the most disappointing things about celebrities on Twitter is fucking Jerry Ryan. Because if you find someone with the shittiest, absolute, most authoritarian bullshit, fucking leftist commie take, she follows them. I I only need to hang around Jerry Ryan for about an hour tops, and then after that, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'll be three times. <laughs> I don't know. For me, it's been a while. That might be closer to four or five. <laughs> I've also been watching. I went back and uh, I did the um, I, just as background too the uh, the Tenet and Jones years, the Martha Jones uh, season. She's just so hot. <laughs> oh, Martha Jones. Why you all, you all, yeah. you have a thing for darker women? Have you noticed that? No, no, not always. I mean, the, you don't get much whiter than redheads. Yeah, but that's just because redheads are insane. That's why you like redheads. Yeah, my ex was a redhead. I can say that. <laughs> anyway, all right, everybody's ex is a redhead. Everybody has at least one ex that's a redhead. Worth it, I and missing a kidney. I, I can say that now, but yeah, she was the one. <laughs> anyway, we should probably get out of here because I have church in the morning and it's late where I am. So, where can okay. folks find you, sir? Uh, surprisingly, you can still find me as Ordnance Packard on Twitter. You can find me. I haven't checked Not with Rain Force to see if I'm going to be on uh, Manorama this week. I'll have to hit him up with that. 
having been off of that show for three weeks now, too, they may have just replaced me. Uh, Rick and Rudy with you on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, Are you I've sure? got. Just kidding. Cult- yeah, Culture Shift with Brad with the nice hair. And then um, I think that's it. I don't know. We'll yeah. find out. Awesome. All right. But I'll be surprised with you. How about you? Where can people not find you? Um, nowhere. <laughs> Don't look for me. It's a trap. All right. So tomorrow night, the week starts over. So America Off the Rails will be the closing act on the Sunday night on KLR Radio. Then Monday through Friday next week, 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern, Rick Robinson Show. Then producing for Rick and – I'm sorry. Pre- producing for Aggie and Brad for the Cocktail Lounge. Uh, then Wednesday night. Chat Lives Matter Night, uh, me and Stacy doing the whatever show. Then G's back doing the conservative convention, and I produce for him. Then the ladies of the red wine uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, then Ordy and I will be your nightcap, assuming he's available. I'm just kidding. Um, at 10 p.m. Eastern. And then Thursday, hopefully, Jen and Rick will be back at 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we've had a couple of weeks off, but uh, she had some family stuff creep up, and then she wasn't feeling well this past Thursday. So I was like, you know what? It's been a hell of a couple of weeks for me anyway, so I'm not really mad. And then Friday, I'll be back doing He Said, She Said with Aggie Regan on at Aggie Time. Uh, all shows other than Toxic Masculinity that Aggie does are pretty much Aggie Time, which is 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, and that will be Friday night. And then that's it for me radio-wise. Uh, tomorrow, I will be working on getting the Loftus Party podcast ready to go, um, which should drop sometime before, hopefully on or before Tuesday. It usually takes me a little bit to get it together because there's some extra work and stuff that has to be done to make that one happen, but it's all right. I don't complain about it much. Um, also, you can find me as a contributor on theloftusparty.com, twitchy.com, and misfitspolitics.com. And if you need more of me than that, and let's face it, if you do, you need therapy. You can always hang out with me on most social media platforms at RowdyRick73. That's it. That's everywhere you can find me. My name is Rick. I'm a workaholic. It's been for never ago since my last meeting. Bye, everybody. We're hey, yeah, real quick. Also, when we do the next show, I've been told we cannot do Finland conspiracies because Jeff is doing in the crease on the Sunday that's going to be Finland. But he was hitting me with a bunch of weird Finland shit uh, today, too. We are totally going to have to do a juxtaposition about Finland. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll just we'll just wait and then do it one of the times he's sore. <laughs> so we're not crossing streams, so to speak. Um, right. Anyway, we will figure out juxtaposition in two weeks because that's two weeks away. So bye, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. You were great. Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra.